Hi, this is Rob Hawley from the Fremont Peak Observatory. Welcome back to my series on photographing solar eclipses. In this section we'll talk about why photographing eclipses is hard and why you need a video series to help you. So why is this hard? The first problem you'll have to face is the range of brightnesses. At constant ISO your exposures will vary from one eight thousandth of a second to many seconds. If you want to capture a range of phenomena you'll have to do this by either varying the ISO or varying your shutter speed. Next, which seems obvious, is the sun moves. You're going to be there for at least four hours from initial setup through totality, and even during totality itself, the sun is going to move out of your field of view. The next is you're going to need to use eye protection during the entire time the sun is exposed. Finally, you're going to be pumped up with adrenaline. If you want a realistic practice of what an eclipse is like, run around the block first and then work with your equipment. Lastly are the big two. The eclipse is only going to last for about two minutes. And you only have one shot at this. The next point is going to seem kind of strange for a, a series on photographing eclipses. But this slide has appeared in every eclipse that I've ever been at. If this is your first eclipse, my best advice of photographing the eclipse is don't. Watch it instead. Okay, well I assume if you're here that that doesn't appeal to you. So let's talk about how to do it successfully. The first thing to do is to apply KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. Make as a part of your plan that you will spend the time to look at the eclipse. To do this, keep what you're doing during the eclipse to a minimum. The two ways to do that is to using automation and to practice. Finally, promise yourself that you'll adopt the 10 second rule. What's that? Promise yourself that you will only spend a maximum of 10 seconds futzing with your equipment in case something goes wrong. There are three alternatives that will help you meet those requirements. The first is to restrict your imaging to wide angle. Wide angle you can start before totality and then you spend your time during totality looking. The next is to use an automated shutter along with a tracking mount. Finally, you can get really sophisticated and use a computer. I've shot wide angle four times, three of which are displayed here. Wide angle has the advantage of capturing the experience of the eclipse, as shown in the next clip from my Svalbard movie. 20 If you combine wide angle and high dynamic range, that means shooting multiple exposures and then combining them with the appropriate software, you can get a dramatic picture as shown in this March 10th, 2016 photo from the astronomy picture of the day of the total solar eclipse over Taranate, Indonesia. So to summarize this section, you need to find an automation that works for you but your priority needs to be looking at the eclipse and not photographing.